Well, hello and congratulations to our graduating senior class. It is an exciting time to see you all moving on into the next stage of your life. If I look back on my own life, I can remember the great times I had in college and how the Lord used my college years to help me grow in my faith. And I really had some deep questions and it was during those years of my life that I began to study and to understand the scriptures for myself and to really grow and to make my faith my own. And so it's an exciting time. And as your youth pastor, I've been praying for all of you leading up to this. And I'm really looking forward to uh, what happens next in each of your stories as you go off to college or to continued studies in various ways. And as the Lord blesses you in the years ahead. And so every year, whenever anybody graduates, I always buy a gift for all of the students who graduate. Uh, and, and in the past five years, it's always been a book, and this year I decided to do something slightly different. Uh, I, I've gotten you all this book, which some of you will have received by now, and some of you maybe not, uh, but you will. I got one for all of you. And it's a book, but it's, it's not just any kind of book. It's actually a prayer book. Uh, it's a book that can be used every day of the month to uh, pray, to be sort of your guide for a daily time of prayer. And it's called this, Be Thou My Vision, uh, a liturgy for daily worship. And so this is what the book looks like. And I kind of wanted to make a video to just explain how to use it and how to get the most out of this book and really what it is. And so uh, if you have yours, you can open it up to the table of contents and you'll see that there's part one and part two. And part one is all about uh, the book itself. It kind of goes into... Um, what the Bible teaches about a daily quiet time. So there's the very first chapter, uh, but then the second chapter, it, it kind of walks you through how to use this book. And I wanted to make a video to kind of make that even easier for you in terms of how to use this, this book for all it's worth. So as I said, it's a book that um, is to be used every day of the month. It has 31 days of, of prayer. Uh, contained in it. And today is actually May 31st, so I will show you what what May 31st looks like. So here, I'll go to day 31. So if it was December 31, I'd be on the same day, or if it was January 31, I'd be here as well. So there's 31 days of prayer, and each day has the same sort of rhythm or routine. So here it starts with a call to worship, something similar to what we do here at church at Almond Valley. It goes from there into an adoration. So it's a prayer from church history, adoring God. Uh, and, then, and then it gives us the reading of the law, confession of sin, an assurance of pardon. It will feel very familiar to those of you who either go to Ammon Valley or other Reformed churches. It will feel similar to our uh, structure of a Sunday morning worship service. And then every day it has us read a creed, whether that's the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed or the Athanasian Creed. Um, each of those creeds teach us, of course, the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith, particularly the Trinity and what Christ has come to do and who Christ is and his two natures and one person. So each of those creeds kind of root us in our church's history. Uh, we're not just Christians in the 21st century with our Bibles, but we are a worshiping, praying community that, uh, and we join the, the church of the past 2,000 years. And that's one of the great benefits of this prayer book. It's a very reformed prayer book uh, in the sense that it is derived very much from historic uh, reformed worship uh, services and liturgies and structures. And so that's all built right into it. You'll, you'll also find prayers of great Reformed theologians like John Calvin or Martin Bootser or Richard Baxter or Zacharias Ursinus uh, from our own Reformed tradition, the author of the Heidelberg Catechism, for example. And speaking of the Heidelberg Catechism, that's another major piece. So as you read the creed for the day, the next thing you'll do is you'll uh, be given a short praise, which is typically the Gloria Patri, which is a triune praise that's been used all throughout church history to simply confess our love and our, our adoration for the Lord. Uh, then it goes into the catechism section, and this is what I really love about this prayer book. 
Uh, I've used other prayer books in my life, particularly the uh, Daily Office from the Book of Common Prayer, which, by the way, is quoted quite a bit in here. The Book of Common Prayer is a great resource. Uh, but this one is uh, even more explicitly reformed. And one of the ways that it does that is by incorporating the, the Heidelberg Catechism as well as the Westminster Shorter Catechism. So the Heidelberg Catechism is what we use in the CRC and other similar denominations like the United Reformed Church or the RCA. Uh, the Westminster Shorter is used by Presbyterian denominations, and of course Presbyterians are Reformed, and Reformed Christians are Presbyterian, so it's uh, there's a, definitely some overlap. And so you could use, I would suggest using the Heidelberg Catechism, but totally feel free to use whichever catechism you want. Maybe um, read through one in your devotions, and then when you finish with that, pick up with the other one and then go back and forth. That, that would be a great thing to do. So after you read the catechism portion for the day, which I should show you actually what that looks like before I move on. So it's broken up, of course, into the questions and answers and the Lord's Day uh, that we know and love here in the Christian Reformed Church. So each Lord's Day is usually anywhere from two to four or maybe five questions and answers. You could read just one Lord's Day at a time. You could read just one question and answer at a time. Uh, for me, I like to read... Uh, a whole two pages. So I'll read the full left page and the full right page, and then I'll move on and put my ribbon back in. That's another thing. You really want to use these ribbons for the three things you'll be switching around in with the book. So I keep one ribbon on whatever day that it is I'm praying, and I'll keep another ribbon in the portion of the catechism that I'm, I'm reading through. And then the final ribbon, which we'll get to in a second, uh, is the portion of the year where we're going to be reading according to a, a certain reading plan called the McShane Bible Reading Plan. Um, Robert Murray McShane was a great, I believe, 18th century Scottish Presbyterian pastor and theologian who came up with a particular reading plan, which usually it's, it's always four readings. Uh, it's usually just four chapters, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more than four chapters. Uh, but you're going to be reading from different parts of Scripture in a systematic way. It's a really good way to kind of get a full diet of Scripture reading. Now, I will say, um, well, coming back, we'll go back here to our actual prayer portion. So you'll finish the catechism part, um, and then you'll pray a prayer for illumination, which is just a historic prayer Um it's a way of praying for the Lord's insight, for the Spirit's guidance as we turn to his word. And so, for example, today on the 31st day of prayer, it's George Herbert, a great English poet and theologian and pastor who wrote a prayer asking for God's illumination. So then it will say, scripture reading, read a portion of God's word, see Appendix 3. And so that's Appendix 3 is that McShane Bible reading plan. So you'll go to the month. So Tomorrow is June, for example, but today is May. So May, I'll find the month, and then I'll find the day, and I will see that it's Deuteronomy 4, Psalms 86 and 87, and Isaiah 32, and Revelation 2. Now, one trick that I was going to mention here that I like to use as I'm doing this uh, is to open up on my phone my podcast app. Uh, you can use any podcast app, I'm sure, and you can find the a daily podcast that's released every single day that goes along with the McShane Bible Reading Plan. It's produced by Crossway, which is the publisher for the ESV uh, translation of the Bible. And you can listen to it as you read. For me, that's really helpful to hear it as I'm reading it. Um, it also helps my mind to stay sort of focused on the text and not wander off. Um, and so usually I'll read with a study Bible. I like to use a, either my ESV study Bible or my Reformation study Bible. So after it finishes reading each chapter, I'll pause my podcast and I'll kind of read through the study notes of the chapter just to help me kind of digest what I've just read because sometimes it doesn't immediately uh, make perfect sense to me. And so I want to kind of uh, spend a couple minutes reading that chapter before I move on to the next reading. Uh, that's just how I do it. Um, often, I should say, often whenever I do this in the mornings, it, it takes me anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes, uh, depending on how slow I go through the scriptures. If I were to just pray this uh, and, and read the scriptures um, just by listening to them on the podcast, it'll 
probably take me about 30 minutes if I just move through things quickly. And that, that's totally fine to do. Uh, I, I think that that's part of the design of how this is to work. Uh, you can kind of go at your own pace. If, you're, if you don't have a whole lot of time, uh, just pray through it. And don't worry about trying to have some emotional experience every single time, uh, but really try to just stay committed to the routine of prayer. I think that that pays dividends in the course of our Christian life. Now, again, speaking of prayer, I should get back to how this works. So after you've done the, the Bible readings for the day, uh, you will pray a prayer of intercession, which is going to be another prayer from church history. So today's is actually from the Book of Common Prayer. And then finally, one of the last sections that you'll be looking at is the further petition section, which here every day just has the three same bullet points. It says personal, church, and world. So you just pray for things going on in your personal life. Maybe pray for yourself, for your friends, for people you know personally. And then for the church, I like to pray for the needs of our church. This is where I will often pray for you as my students, or I'll pray for those in our church who are sick or struggling with something in particular. But it's also a time where I will pray for the, the church as a whole, the, the global church. I'll spend time sometimes praying for the churches that I've been a member of in my lifetime, and I will pray that the Lord will bless them in different ways. And then finally, it says for the world, and this is where you can pray for world events, world movements, uh, political figures or political happenings that are taking place. Uh, and so it, it's sort of up to you. And I really like that about the this, this prayer book is that it invites you to use a lot of written prayers, which for me is really helpful. Sometimes I don't know exactly what to say or to pray. And so I love learning. Not only do I enjoy praying the prayers, but I enjoy learning from them what a good prayer could look like. So it helps me to become a better prayer myself. And then at the very end, every day, it concludes with the Lord's Prayer, a great way uh, to, to learn to pray, of course. Jesus taught his disciples that prayer when they asked him to teach them how to pray. And so, again, that's, that's how this book works. Uh, you could do it by yourself, uh, or you could do it with someone. Uh, you could share the same copy and go through it together and try to read things out loud together as you see fit. Uh, or you could maybe each get your own copy. It's about $30 if one of your friends or roommates in college is curious about getting one. Um, so definitely look into that. Um, some, some more notes just to take uh, mental note of. So the appendices in the back, um, you can see a few, a few cool things. Again, you have both of those catechisms, it's actually the exact same translation of the Heidelberg Catechism that the CRC uses that most of you will be familiar with, uh, which is really nice and it's, uh, it's kind of ideal in that way. Another cool thing that I haven't yet mentioned, which is beyond the Bible reading plan, it's Appendix 4 towards the very back. It's the collects from the Book of Common Prayer. Now, collect, you may think collects from the Book of Common Prayer. That's what it looks like, but it's actually collect. That's just a fancy English way of pronouncing uh, a certain word. And what that word means is that it's a collective prayer. It's a prayer that we can collectively put, pray together as the church. Now, as I said, I really like the Book of Common Prayer. Um, that's neither here nor there. That's not something we need to go super far into. But here, you can follow the church calendar. Um, and I think that, that that's a really cool feature of this. And this is sort of just an option if you want. Usually you can pray it during that time of petition or that time of uh, praying from the heart towards the end of each day. So you can flip back here if you want. And so let's say you're in the middle of Advent. It'll have prayers for the Advent season that you can pray. Um, It'll have prayers for the Easter season or the first day of Lent or uh, things like that. And so, for example, right now we just had uh, Pentecost Sunday this past Sunday, which in the Book of Common Prayer is known as Whitsunday or White Sunday. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit, uh, His Sunday. And so we could pray that prayer every day during the Pentecost season until we reach Trinity Sunday, which is where 
things transition into normal time. But that's just one more fun little thing that you want to use, if you, especially if it's Christmas time and you want to pray some Christmas-themed prayers about the Incarnation, or if it's Easter time and you want to reflect more in your prayers on the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, you're invited then to use these prayers at the very, very back, which I think are really great. And one last little thing, which is really fun as well, if you're not sure who a particular uh, person is, all throughout the prayer book, there's going to be different prayers from church leaders, pastors, theologians, uh, martyrs. And so you can go to the very back, Appendix 5, and you'll get a quick little uh, blurb about each one, so, sort of see when they lived and what their sort of legacy is for us today. And so again, I hope that you guys use this, that you find it really helpful and profound in your own prayer lives. Uh, I realize that uh, prayer can be a really hard thing to commit yourself to, and I, I don't expect every one of you to use this every day for the rest of your life or anything like that, although that would be great, and I think it's well suited for that. Uh, I think there's enough uh, difference day to day and month to month that it kind of... Uh, will allow for a long-term amount of use. Um, but I really hope that when, when you're in college and you hit those hard, difficult moments, which you inevitably will, those are going to happen, I, I hope and pray that you can turn to this book, pull it maybe off your shelf, and use it for a few weeks. Use it for a whole month. Use it for a whole semester. And begin to see how a structured, reformed way of praying can really benefit you over the course of a long period of time. And so I hope it's that. If you guys have any questions, uh, if you need any more tips on how to use it or other ideas on prayer, please just let me know. Just because I'm your youth pastor from your now former church, uh, I'm happy to stay in touch with you. I, in fact, I would love to stay in touch with you and to continue being a small part of your journey with the Lord. Uh, again, congratulations to you all. I am proud of you all, and I look forward to what the Lord has in store for each of you. All right, grace and peace. See you guys.